Welcome learners. This video titled Great Andamanis of Strait Island 2 is the second video in a three-part series where we shall continue with the historical background of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Do you remember where we left in part one of the video? Yes, in the previous video, we discussed about the relationship between the British and the tribes of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Well, it is worth mentioning that the relationship between the British and the tribes was not that easy going. The British were faced with two problems by the creation of the penal settlement. First, the general policy to be adopted towards the tribes and second, the creation of a suitable machinery of administration for control over the convicts to regulate the relations between them and the tribes. The British formulated a sympathetic policy of behaviour for their officials towards the natives. In fact, the government of India issued instructions to P. Walker, the superintendent of Port Blair, to adhere to the conciliatory line of conduct and to prohibit any aggression upon them and not to use any force on them unless it is absolutely necessary to repeal their attacks. Majumdar observes that though P. Walker, the superintendent of Port Blair, was instructed to adopt a conciliatory approach towards the aborigines, and he came to the conclusion that there was not a slightest chance of taking a conciliatory approach. Hence, he adopted a policy of coercion and chastisement or blood and iron towards the Andamanis. On account of the faulty policy of Walker, there were so many skirmishes and even armed attacks. The tribes felt threatened as the aliens were penetrating into their territories. As a result, the tribes carried out a series of organized, premeditated, unprovoked attacks on the British and Indians in quick succession during the months of April and May 1859. Is it true that there was a change in the British attitude when P. Walker was succeeded by Captain Houghton? Houghton instructed his people not to attack the Andamanis without any provocation. Despite his conciliatory moves, there were a few cases of skirmishes. In the year 1860, things improved with Dr. Gamak, the civil assistant surgeon of Port Blair, who made friendly gestures to a few men of Akabiada tribe on the Chatham Island in Port Blair. Gifts were offered to the aborigines and they were received. Later on, in spite of the gifts given to them, attacks were conducted on the settlement. But now there was an opening to befriend the tribes and employ them in the settlement. This process of earnest efforts of making friendly relations with the tribes passed through many ups and downs. In spite of all the efforts, still the British policy failed. What could be the reasons? Persistent hostility of the certain tribes, outbreak of various types of epidemics among the friendly tribes. The Jarawa continued to be hostile. On many occasions, they attacked the settlements. It was also that those who were friendly with the outsiders got a variety of diseases. As far back as 1866, there was a noticeable increase of sickness among the tribes. Not a single child out of 150 born in the Andaman home during 1864 to 1870 lived for more than two years. The tribes outside the Andaman home fell victim to malaria that became epidemic due to clearance of forests. The tribes suffered from the dangerous disease of syphilis, presumably contracted from the convicts in charge of the home. Even the children suffered from hereditary syphilis. The whole race was faced with extinction and the government confessed that it was beyond its power to check it. Apart from syphilis, there were other sicknesses in quick succession. First came the epidemic of ophthalmia, which broke out in July 1876. It lasted for about six months and made many aborigines partially or entirely blind. The measles broke out in March 1877 and this disease was also brought by the convicts from the mainland. The boys of the orphanage caught it and passed it on to the tribes in general. 51 persons died of this. Attempts were made to segregate the aborigines affected with measles, but they fled in fear and even patients fled from hospitals. Thus, 
the disease spread rapidly and within two or three years, half the original inhabitants of the great Andaman island and almost the entire population except the Jarawas of South Andaman between Port Campbell and Middle Strait died of measles. The work of destruction of the tribes was accelerated by the epidemic mumps that broke out in August 1886 and that of influenza in April 1890. The infection of influenza like that of syphilis was believed to have been brought by the convicts from India and it spread rapidly throughout the islands. Disease gonorrhea first appeared in an Andaman home in July 1892. By the end of the 19th century, these diseases practically exterminated the tribes of the Andamans except the two hostile tribes, Ongas and Jarawas. The population of none of the 12 tribes except these two and the Eri ex the population of none of the 12 tribes except these two and the Eri exceeded 100 in 1902 one and six of them numbered less than 50. By 1931, even the number of the Eri was reduced to 46. According to census 1951, the gradual extinction of the Andaman's tribes is shown in table below. After 1961 census, we see the presence of some new tribes this is an indication that the terrain and people of the islands being hostile, they were not fully explored to come to a definite conclusion about the demography of the tribes. Commenting on the above census, commenting on the above census figures from 1958 to 1961, Majumdar observes that it cannot be accepted as far as the Jarawa and the Onges are concerned, for these were the hostile tribes living in isolation and it was difficult to count their number. In 1961, only six of the original tribes existed of which four were Negrito tribes in the Andaman Islands and two namely the Nicobaris and the Shompains were the Mongoloids who lived in the Nicobar group of islands. Of the six tribes in Andaman and Nicobar Islands, the Jarawa and the Sentinelese still lived in isolation. The administration had been trying to befriend them by sending contact parties. In some cases, the political and criminal prisoners after the release continued living there, joined by their families later. The Great Andamanis The Great Andamanis have been rehabilitated in a small island named Strait Island. They were once the largest in population amongst the various tribes inhabiting the Andaman Islands. Their estimated population in the year 1789 was 10,000. However, by 1901, their number had decreased to 625 and by 1969, their number had further reduced to 19 only. According to the census of 1971, only 24 of them were around, but by 1991, their number had increased to 45. The language they speak is Andamanese, belonging to the Andamanese group of languages. The link language is Hindi and the script Devanagari. They exhibited predominance of blood group A followed by B and O. They are short statured, the average height being 148 cm and broad headed with true peppercorn type of hair. The females had steatopegia. The administration claims to be doing its best to protect and preserve this tribe. What do you know about the eating and drinking habits? They eat rice, dal, chapati and other modern food items. They can cook food using spices. They smoke beedis, cigarettes, chew bitter leaves with lime, arachnut and tobacco leaves and drink tea often. At times, they still go hunting and gathering. Their traditional diet consists of fish, dugong, turtle, turtle eggs, crabs, roots and tubers. They also eat pork, water monitor lizard and so on. As coastal people, they relish octopus, mollusks taken out from shell of marine animals like turban shell, scorpion shell, sundial, helmet, 
trochas and screw shell besides various types of crabs and fish. Lately, some of them have taken to cultivating vegetables and have also established poultry farms. They have been found to be quite vulnerable to communicable diseases. They are said to have acquired unhealthy drinking habit after contact with the non-tribal, urban, dominant and advanced communities. Also kindly share the situation of great Andamanis. The great Andamanis are said to have their major encounter with outsiders in the 18th century. It is believed that in 1789, Lieutenant Archibald Blair of the British Navy landed in these islands. The records by Radcliffe Brown in the year 1948 show that these islands were dreaded because the outsiders had no access to the islands and they had virtually no information about the inhabitants there. The number of the great Andamanis, however, is vanishing fast and there is a danger of them being wiped off completely in the near future, according to Radcliffe Brown. After watching this video, you should be able to have a general understanding of the land and its people in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, knowledge of the historical background and an understanding of general socio-economic and political life of the great Andamanis.